This is City and State TV. I'm Albany Bureau Chief John Lentz. Joining me today is Tim Hofer, Executive Director of the Empire Center. Thanks for being with me today. Sure, I'm happy to do it. And we want to ask you about See Through New York, a project of the Empire Center, posts a lot of financial and budget data. Uh, but in your own words, what, what is this? What is it for? And um, what should we be looking at when we check out this site? So back in 2008, when we first launched See Through, um, we, we saw and, and thought there was a need um, and a desire for taxpayers to be able to see government spending data in, a, in an easier to look at and easier to search format than they were able to get it otherwise. Um, up until that point, there was really no way to sort of look at payrolls, let alone contracts and expenditure data on, on state and local level. So since 2008, we've been building this database, and it now has um, it has payroll information for almost every public employee in the state. We've got collective bargaining contracts on the school level for teachers' unions and superintendents. Um, we post legislative expenditure data, uh, which comes out on a biannual basis. Um, and we have some, some tools that we've added over the years. Uh, it includes a benchmarking tool, which allows you to look at uh, local, local government spending um, and search it and compare it to other local governments and it allows you to look at um, property tax rates in different municipalities throughout the state. So um, in that particular tool you can go in and look at, you can type in the value of your house in your town and your school district and find out exactly what your property taxes are and you can take that and compare it to like municipalities and school districts across the state. So it's a great tool for sort of looking at um, um, for comparing your municipalities to others and, and see what you're getting versus what they're getting and at what cost. And obviously it's a uh, state budget season right now. Is there anything currently in the state budget that you've looked at um, posted through this website that, that stands out? Yep, another tool we have on it, we have a um, budget app that where we put up the, right now it's got the executive budget proposal on it. Um, and you can sort of look through it and see where, uh, where the governor is allocated in his executive budget compared to years past, see what it's going to look like in the out years. Um, um, but really the point of see-through is to look at to look at spending sort of from from the large scale and, and all the way down to you know like the local person or the local contract and and really get a sense of where your tax dollars are going on an annual or, or even daily basis. I'd also be curious how hard it is to get some of this data. You just put out um, payroll information for some state authorities recently on the mm -hmm. website. Um, you said you know a number of other examples of, of data sets that you have how difficult is it to get that? Do you ever have to file lawsuits? Um. It, the, the collecting the data runs the gamut. I mean, we have to, um, for the collective bargaining agreements that we get, we have to FOIL the school districts individually, sometimes twice a year, one for the teacher, one for the superintendent. Um, that can be an arduous process. The first time we did it, we uh, filed Article 78 motions against eight school districts. Um, um, that since has gotten a bit easier. A lot of the information comes from the controller's office. The public authority data comes from Paris, which collects information on public authorities. Um, the state payroll comes from the controller. We get a lot of data from the pension systems. Um, and, and in general, that's, that's, um, that's a process we've worked out over the years, and it's gotten relatively easy, so we can get it up quick and, and get it out for, for people to look at. Um, we've been trying to collect pension data for going on four years now. Um, and at the end of this month, we're going to have a case heard at the Court of Appeals um, because seven of the eight pension systems in the state have redacted names from the data. Um, we find that totally unacceptable. We think that the retirement systems and the courts are reading the law wrong. Um, so we're hoping for a positive outcome there. But you know, to your point, yes, we do when we have to um, file lawsuits to get the information. And who's your audience for this website? Who's, who's actually using it now? Is, is there a way you'd want to broaden it and you know, get more people checking this out? I, I mean, always. I think the more people looking at it, the better. Again, the point of putting it up there is so people can look at it and sort of make decisions on um, um, how their governments are operating. Because it's, it's hard to say whether or not you're getting your money's worth if you don't know where your money's going. Um, I think over the last 12 months, we had 6 million unique visitors to the site, so I'm not unhappy with that. Um, but there are, you know, upwards of almost 20 million people in the state, so there's a lot more who could be looking. Uh, the audience ranges from taxpayers to legislators to policymakers. I think anybody who has an interest in this thing should be looking at it. Um, again, I, you know, I, I think it falls on the taxpayers, um, many of whom are paying really high taxes and are mad about it, uh, to understand where those dollars are going to be able to argue that, you know, where they think change is necessary and where it's not. And do you think the state should be doing something similar to what you're doing with this effort? 
Uh, to some end, the state is doing this. The controller has um, Open Book New York. When he posts, they post contracts on there, and they've been expanding that database over the last. They've really been making concerted effort over the last year to expand that database. Um, the attorney general puts up some information, but we've said since the beginning when we launched this that you know we we wanted to do this to show the government that they could do it. Um, again, I think the, the the quickest and cheapest and easiest that you can get the data up is the best way to do it. Um, we've drafted model legislation uh, that calls for proactive disclosure, um, uh, which essentially we're saying that we think that all data should be published on the internet, whether it's given to somebody like me or whether the government does it themselves, um, but it should be published proactively before it's asked for, which, you know, it gets the information to the taxpayer sooner, but it also will lessen the degree of work on the government entities um, who don't have to respond to and answer a bunch of FOIA requests if everything that they're entitled to give out is already posted online. So maybe one day you wouldn't even need this project. Yeah, in a perfect world it would all be up and, and we wouldn't have to do this. But in the meantime, uh, we'll continue doing it. We have a lot of fun doing it and we think it's really useful. Tim Hofer, thanks for joining us today. Sure.